Hey guys, now here's my number one thing about doing this live video. Last time I did this, oh, I think it's at the end. Last time I did a live video, I wanted to save it because I wanna start doing Instagram Lives and then saving them to my highlights. And so I finished it and published it and I didn't save it. So I think I'm, that's what I need to remember is that when I finish this, I just have to remember to hit save. So hey everybody that's joining. Um, I decided very impromptu like, which is very much like me, to do this video because so many of you have been uh, private messaging me asking about intermittent fasting, um, whether I'm doing it now, whether I'm not doing it, whether I think it affects things like adrenal fatigue, hypothyroidism, insulin resistance, all of that. And I thought, this might be a good chance. I actually had texted my friend Amanda, she's the founder of Faster Way to Fat Loss, um, because at, at present, and I'm gonna explain all of this to you, I'm not doing intermittent fasting. On the other hand, I will be going back to intermittent fasting when my body's at a place where it's appropriate. So I'm gonna give you, and full disclosure, hi everybody, hi Saver the Time, hi John Bristol, um, I am gonna give you guys just a disclosure. I feel like I have to do this. I'm not a doctor. I just listened to a really good one, Dr. Lane Sebring um, here in Austin. And for what it's worth, um, a lot of what I'm learning is coming from some tremendous individuals. Dr. Lane Sebring is my doctor who's helping cure me of so much that's messed up with my body. And he has been interviewed by me um, on Fit Influential Radio, the podcast. So I hope that you guys, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, you owe it to yourself to go. I think we've got like 137 episodes live. I have two interviews live with Sebring and I think both of them are like two parts. So they're like over an hour. And I recorded, it's probably gonna go live in about a week. Um, probably gonna be three episodes on cortisol. Cortisol, its relation to fat, fat storage, inability to lose fat, cortisol stress, all of that. So many of you are, are asking about that and not understanding what does it mean when you have high cortisol or really low cortisol like me. Um, and so that's coming out as well. So just bear in mind that I have some outstanding interviews with not only my doctor, I have dietitians, I've got surgeons, I've got acupuncturists, I've got trainers, I've got all kinds of amazing interviews and more and more are gonna be on these types of topics. Because ultimately, whether you're a man or a woman, if you are hitting the wall, and this is ageless, it doesn't matter if you're 49 like me, or if you're 27, or if you're 32, this can happen regardless of age. If you are hitting a wall, and training and eating right and you find yourself going, what is wrong with me? And I either can't lose weight or you can't lose weight and maybe maybe it's not that you can't lose weight, it's that you're doing everything the same and suddenly you're gaining weight and it's particularly around your core. Um, these are things where it could be highly likely, I'm not a doctor, you could have adrenal fatigue. You could have hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is extremely common. You could have adrenal fatigue and hypothyroidism. You could have cortisol issues. You could have um, any number of things like low testosterone. Um, I had extremely low testosterone. I've been on medication that's been blocking my testosterone and my poor doctor didn't even realize I was still on this medication. If you're in that situation, I used to be mistaken, and I wanna put this out there, several years ago, I used to think that if I saw anybody who was bitching and moaning that they were working out and they weren't losing weight, I used to judge people and I used to go, right, you're probably just eating, or yeah, you probably drink wine every night. I thought it was just as simple as what you eat and how you train, and it's not. It is if you're healthy and you have a fully functioning body that, that works normally, okay? If you have a, this might sound funny to say, if, if you're an overweight individual, but an overweight individual who doesn't have all of those problems that I mentioned, cortisol issues, hypothyroidism, insulin resistance, um, testosterone issues, if the hormones are right, but this person's just really heavy, the normal things 
that you would think would be recommended by a trainer or a dietitian or a doctor, eat less, move more, that's gonna work for that person. If you have any or a lot of these symptoms that I've shared with you, and I've got them all, you can train and eat and take all the supplements in the world and it's a, you've got a car that's just not gonna start. Um, so, I, by the way, I can't comment with all of you guys. Um, you guys think it's low testosterone. Um, testosterone is key, and it's not just for men. Ladies, if you think that you should not be um, worrying about getting your testosterone up, you're crazy. Uh, if you are going to a doctor, I don't wanna get off, I, it's so easy for me to get off on too many tangents here. But ladies, if you're going to an OBGYN or an endocrinologist or some kind of holistic practitioner and they've given you just, without even looking at blood work for you, and they've just given you progesterone, you're in the wrong place. If you're going to an OBGYN or a doctor who's just like, oh, you can't lose weight? Let me give you some Xanax and you need to just go for a walk or go running, you're in the wrong place. Um, if you're going to see somebody and they're doing blood work and they won't share that blood work with you, your own blood work, you're in the wrong place. You need to be getting comprehensive blood work and starting to understand what it all means. It can be very confusing, but your blood work is what's going on with you. And trust me when I say what is going on with you is very different than what's going on with me, than what's going on with everybody else. So to tie this all back to a lot of you asking me about, am I doing intermittent fasting? Why have I had to change how I'm training at the gym? Am I eating more? Am I eating less? What is it that I'm doing differently because of my hormones and my cortisol and my thyroid and my adrenal fatigue situation? Many of you that have been following me for a while know I've, I've been talking about hormonal imbalance for a while. I started to see a doctor and started to get blood work. I think this was four, maybe, maybe three years ago. Um, so some of you might be listening and going, this is not new. Like Kelly, you know you've had this. And some of my, some of my things, like my insulin resistance, have actually gotten better. What I discovered most recently is, here, here's the long and short of it. I first started seeing a doctor out in Phoenix who's very talented, but I, cert I do not feel that that doctor um, was addressing the issues that needed to be addressed as importantly as I wanted them to. He's much more focused on overall anti-aging. I wanted my thyroid situation addressed. I don't feel that it was addressed or taken as seriously and we weren't addressing anything like cortisol or adrenal fatigue. Fast forward to meeting Dr. Sebring here in Austin. Um, I just started seeing him a little over a year ago and I was messed up. I had been following the advice of someone who's not a doctor, not a trainer, not a dietitian, but just a blowhard who seemed to think that he knew everything. And he talked a good talk. He was involved in my company for a while. And he told me a, just horrible, horrible advice. And I followed it, so I have to take responsibility for that. But when I finally saw Dr. Sebring and got my blood work done, I was just in a bad place. I gained a ton of weight. I was very thick, very full of inflammation. Um, and we were essentially starting fresh. Now, one of the things I've been on, and I want to bring this up because I'm going to do a whole um, interview series on this topic, on this medication in particular. Um, I have been on a drug called spironolactone since 2009. I've been on spironolactone for nine years. Um, the reason that I was on spironolactone, and again, please know if you're watching this on the replay, if you're listening to me now, I'm gonna put some of these videos here on Instagram. We are gonna do an, a detailed series and I will actually be launching a private group. Um, it'll be a subscription group for women if you want to learn as much as humanly possible about any, of, any and all of these things so that you can get help. Because I will tell you this, there is a shit ton to learn 
about our hormones and about stress and how we're affecting ourselves about overtraining and under eating and how all of that is affecting us and and how it all mixes together and can completely work against you it's a lot to learn but ladies particularly and well men men as well you have to learn this stuff because if you're not aware even when you get a fantastic doctor like i have okay i have an outstanding doctor I'm bringing this back to the spironolactone because I wasn't bringing up the fact, hey, Dr. Sebring, I'm still on spironolactone. Don't we want to wean me off of this? I thought he knew I was on it. He didn't know I was on it. Spironolactone is a testosterone blocker. So I have been on this since 2009. My first doctor didn't wean me off of it. And and everything that we've been doing to give me the benefits of testosterone, which ladies, if, you're, if you don't know what testosterone does for you, just think of why men can lose weight so much easier than women. That's one of the reasons. Um, testosterone affects your energy, it affects your sex drive, your libido. Um, it's going to affect your how fast or how effectively you can lose weight, among other things. Testosterone is a good thing. I've been on medication that has been blocking all the testosterone that we've been producing in my body. And then when I brought this up with my doctor about two weeks ago and he had this look of, I'm pretty sure if I would have known you were on that, I would have told you to stop it. Like that's really bad for you. And all this testosterone that you've been making, you haven't been able to benefit from. This is why ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand this complicated mess that will become less complicated as you learn about it. You've got to understand it so that when you start going to see a doctor, even a really good practitioner like Dr. Sebring, you can say, hey, I got a question. I didn't, doesn't this affect, you know, my estrogen and what, what about this? What about this article that I read? Be able to be your own advocate is so important. So when I saw my doctor two weeks ago and we discovered, you know, you shouldn't be on that, cut it cold turkey. My man and I, we went out to eat afterwards and we, he's so sweet, he started doing this research on spironolactone. You guys do the, the research. Do you know what the side effects of spironolactone are? Weight gain, inability to lose weight, headaches, dizziness, migraines, all things I've been suffering from and trying to get to the root of for years. And I'm on medication that causes all that. And I've been on the maximum dose of this medication since 2009. People, if you are not aware of what's going in in your body, you will find a wonderful program, such as Amanda's Faster Way to Fat Loss or any general intermittent fasting program. Fasting has amazing benefits for a healthy body. Intermittent fasting is out, and in my opinion, it really helped me get a handle on um, true hunger versus just wanting food. I'm somebody that loves food, okay? I love to cook, I love to eat. Um, I it Pretty much sweets appeal to me, savory stuff appeals to me. I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, I'm a savory person, I'm not a sweet person, or I'm a sweet person, I'm not a savory. I am all things, okay? But intermittent fasting really helped me. Um, I hired a dietitian, an outstanding dietitian, actually recommended to me by Amanda, who founded Faster Rate of Fat Loss, because she knew that I was taking her program, and out of desperation, I was taking it even further to the extremes, because I wasn't seeing results. Why was I not seeing results? Is it because of the program? No, it's because I was already, my dietitian doesn't like me to say this, I was already broken, so I'm using that as a figure of speech. I was already a, a broken vessel, okay? And I was taking that program, training way harder than her program dictated, adding in 24-hour fasts because I thought, I'm not losing weight, let me fast even more. So I was doing 24-hour fasts every other day. I was adding 20 minutes of HIIT training every morning in addition to all the training that I was doing with my trainer, my trainer told me that was okay. My trainer didn't know that I had adrenal fatigue and cortisol issues. And further, I don't think he really, it's not his job to understand hormone issues. It's his job to train me. 
So I was taking advice from a trainer. I was taking advice from people online. Before that, I was taking advice from an idiot. I was trying to burn and push and train and whatever didn't work, I was trying to do more and more and more. And just think of it like, just trying to shove everything and make it work. If your body is not responding and my body was not responding, think about, think about you guys, everything I said that I was doing, I was training harder, cutting back even more on my food, massive amounts of stress about my body, about my body's inability to lose weight, massive stress about my business, massive stress about family situations, massive stress about, you know, the fact that I moved to Austin. The reason I moved to Austin was because of two people that ended up being complete criminals. They did horrible things to my business. Other people that used to work for me did horrible things to my business. I just had one calamity after another, after another. My life has been like stress.com. And here I was taking a fantastic program and thinking, here's the, here's the summary that I've been trying to share with people recently. I have been looking at my body and looking at my fitness results. And if I was not losing weight and I wasn't building the muscle that I wanted, I always assumed it's because I'm not training hard enough it's because I need to add more cardio. It's because I need to add more plyo. It's because I must be eating too many carbs. It must be because I had hummus that day. It must be that I had a glass of wine when I went out. It must be this. All of these crazy things, over analysis, stress, starting to train more, work out less, over training, under eating, all of that stuff made things worse. And it was Amanda, again, the founder of that program who was like, Kelly, I can guarantee you, you're not eating enough and you're training too hard. Let me connect you with Emily, um, this dietitian. And I hired Emily about 90 days ago. And after I filled out a form and told her what I was doing, she's like, the first thing we need to do is get you eating again because you're over training, under eating, and your body is like <laughs> WTH. So, to tie this back for today, you know, I, 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 you guys that know me know that I could probably do a video here for like seven hours easily, but I'm gonna try to give this as like an introductory video and then do more. But I, I truly had about 10 of you private message me today specifically about fasting and several of you this past week have asked about it. So the long and short of it is the reason that I am not doing intermittent fasting is not because I feel um, that it's a bad thing. In fact, I'm a huge advocate. I very much cannot wait to get back to it. I know I will be getting back to it. When I work with both my, my doctor and my dietitian, who in a way are working together with me, um, my body, you know, the biggest things we're looking to heal are I have major adrenal fatigue. My cortisol is lower <laughs> than, I think the way my doctor described it is, he said in the afternoons, which is right about now, he's like, your cortisol is so low, you should be asleep. Um, it's as low as it, it should be when you're in the middle of the night sleeping. My cortisol is very, very low. Um, and so we're working on that overall adrenal fatigue. And people, when you really start to understand um, adrenal fatigue and what it took for your body to get there, you realize it's, it's a serious thing to unravel and it needs serious attention. And you've got to, I was about to say, you're, you got to take it seriously. And that sounds awfully redundant, but that is what I'm doing. And it has been very interesting for me to run into a lot of ladies a lot of ladies, and I feel it's only going to increase on Instagram, in social media, women of all ages. I know two that I follow off the top of my head, and one of them is Alex uh, Mazurko. I hope I'm saying her last name correctly. I've referenced her on my Instagram. Um, I'll put up a post and link to her. Um, she's 27, and um, I, I've said earlier in the week, She's a year ahead of me and she's been healing her body from 
these very same issues. She has some things that are different than mine, but essentially same thing. Um, she had very, very stressful years in her life, a lot of traumatic experiences, um, extreme dieting, extreme training, and her body was just broken and then started gaining weight, was working against her, and she just had to do everything I'm doing, which is tailor back the training, calm down, focus on feeding your body, soothing your body, healing your body, getting it like, you know, you kind of have to treat yourself when you're in this position, like you're your own patient and, and a patient that's come into your home who maybe just had mono. I mean, that's how I have to keep like talking to myself, like I'm a patient, I'm very sick. If you had somebody who was a dear friend of yours come into your home and stay with, who was gonna stay with you for six months, and you knew they just had mono or maybe they'd broken both legs, would you be suggesting they go to the CrossFit gym tomorrow and start a strict paleo diet? No, you would say, we need to get your energy back. Like, what would your mom do? How would your mom help nurse you back to health? Yeah, that's how serious this stuff is. Um, fixing yourself, healing yourself, it's not just a fitness thing, but if you keep treating your body like, oh, I'm not losing weight, oh, I'm thick around my core, oh, I can't lose this, and I must just need to train harder and just diet more, you're gonna destroy yourself, um, both from a stress perspective, but from a, you know, at some point, your body is gonna be far worse than the stuff I'm dealing with. So. The reason that I'm not doing intermittent fasting is, and, and actually it was Emily, my dietitian, who said it so well in our first consult. She said, we're not gonna do fasting right now. And she didn't say, we're not doing it because I don't believe in that. She said, we're not doing that because it's not serving you right now. In other words, do some research. There's some outstanding videos. If you have Amazon Prime, I can't believe anybody doesn't. There's a free video on the science of fasting. It's fascinating. Fasting is an extremely beneficial practice when done right for a healthy body. I absolutely plan to go back to it. The bottom line is fasting and, and any form of non-nurturing eating is detrimental for me. And I'm not making that generalization about any of you. Any of you that are dealing with should I be intermittent fasting or not, have to look at the state of your hormones and the state of your health. If you have any of those issues, you might wanna do some research. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. What I am gonna tell you is, when my body's at a better place, when Emily feels that I'm there, when my doctor feels that I'm there, I will be going back and incorporating that. Um, it's been wonderful to do some reverse dieting and I, I had to learn to eat meals again and not be scared of carbs and not be scared of fat and not be scared of pretty much everything I ate. And so I'm, I think I, I'm typ typically I'm either at 1700, 1800 calories. Um, and I'm working with my doctor now. We've taken me off the spironolactone. Um, I'm gonna be going on different thyroid medication in about three or four weeks. So we're working to really um, address my thyroid. Um, I think we're gonna be putting me on low dose naldextrone. You can do some Googling on that. I'm gonna be interviewing specialists on all of these medications, good and bad. Um, so make sure you're tuned into the Fitfluential podcast for that. Um, but. We're gonna do that, and um, so I mentioned, let's see. Oh, and then he changed my, uh, the cream that I use for my hormones to, my estrogen was very high. Testosterone was at a good level, but it didn't matter because I was on spironolactone. I wasn't getting any of the benefits of testosterone. So hopefully with each week, I'll start to feel the, the benefits of testosterone the more that my body adjusts to being off the spironolactone, as my estrogen decreases, I should start seeing less of the swelling. Um, I'm sure you guys, my boobs are really big right now. Um, I definitely feel bigger um, in general. I have not been able to lose weight at all. I'm training um, three days a week. I'm doing strength training, no cardio, no plyo. I do yoga three times a week and one full day off and that's it. And the biggest changes, the biggest change for me in training has been scaling it back, slowing it down and being okay that that's enough. I realize as I've made these changes in my diet, in 
how I'm treating myself, how much worse I was before, how every single workout, whenever I did a workout, I viewed it, it's not enough. I need to add more. I need to go do an hour of cardio. I need to do some HIIT training. I need to, if I finish my workout and it's 45 minutes, that's not enough. Let me add six more sets. Guess what? None of that worked, you guys, and it only made it worse. So please learn your lesson from me. Um, hey, May, I just saw Mrs. Fit Librarian. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, so I hope that for those of you, some, some of you that have been paying me, um, allergies, um, the last several days that I gave you at least some um, insight into what's going on. It is not easy. I shared or maybe earlier today on, on Instagram, um, you know, I saw some pictures of myself a year ago when I was, when I'd first been doing Amanda's program and I'd seen some results. I'd seen some results um, in the summer, yeah, summer of last year, up until about this time, um, because my doctor um, had put me on HCG. Now, many of you might be going, what doctor would put you on HCG? I basically begged my doctor to do something to help me lose fat, because you guys, I'd gained four or five inches on my waist. I was, I couldn't fit in anything. I felt hideous and I went to him and I said, please, get, I will do anything to lose weight. I own a fitness company. I'm embarrassed to leave my house. I hate how I look. Give me something. So I can't blame him. He, he said at the time, he's like, I think you need a win. And this is an extreme diet, and it is. It's, it's a hormone that you inject, and it is 500 calorie diet. Guys and gals, what does that tell you that the only way that I have lost weight significantly in the last couple of years is to go on 500 calories a day? That's effed up, okay? It worked for a while, but the truth is, even though I felt better and I was just looking at some of my Facebook videos from uh, a little over a year ago, I was like, oh, my arms look so much better. I mean, I just feel so much extra flesh on my arms lately, trying to be positive, but I'm just keeping it real. Um, my boobs are bigger. I, I just feel kind of bigger everywhere. And I have to, I have to accept that and I have to accept that this is gonna be a process, and I have to give up my idea of, oh, I'm gonna hit these fitness goals by this date, or I'm gonna hit this weight loss goal by this date. I have no idea. It might take me six months, it might take me nine months, it might take me a year, it might take me eight weeks. I have no idea. Bottom line is, I wanna fix myself permanently. I'm no longer looking for a diet or a fad because that's what I've been doing and punishing myself for the better part of nine, 10 years. And it almost destroyed me. I mean, my health only got worse. Now I'm doing the right things. It's not easy. It's not easy to look and, and I just happened on some of these videos and I'm like, oh, look how good my arms were looking. My delts were popping. But you know what? It didn't last. It didn't last long last year. Um, it, you know, I think I remember because I was going to a, a, a conference in Phoenix about a year ago and I remember feeling good and then I came back and I was training with my trainer Blaine and I remember having a meltdown because I went to see him and I'm like I don't know what's going on I feel fat I've gained weight I've... do you know how many times I've said that over the past years so anytime I I felt like oh I'm losing weight I'm looking good it was fleeting that's because my body was broken you know, sometimes it's like getting mono, you know, going into the hospital. You can lose weight because you're sick, but you're gonna just put it back on. So if you're sick, you've gotta heal, and then your body will respond to things like carb cycling and intermittent fasting and um, sprinting and, and CrossFit and whatever it is that you wanna do. But if your body's broken, and I'm using that metaphorically, you have to calm down and give yourself time to heal. And that's what I'm doing. So hopefully that gave you, a, first of all, a big picture of everything that's going on. I hope many of you, so many of you write me and go, I think I have these issues. I think I have this. Please, please, please get yourself comprehensive blood work. 
get your get it so that you can take it to a doctor and then when you go to a doctor go loaded with questions don't go in there and just go here's my blood work tell me what to do and be strong enough and informed enough to know that again if you go to a doctor and they just say let me put you on some Xanax if they go to if you go to a doctor and they say ladies let me just put you on some progesterone and they don't even measure it or customize it for you that's effed up you need to know what what's important and become really pushy and become comfortable with being pushy because trust me when i say i'm 49 years old i'm dealing with issues but generally speaking i feel better about myself and about the future than i did when i was 20 or when i was 30. you can be looking and feeling better as you get older but this crap this hormonal crap this cortisol crap this adrenal stuff it's going to become more and more common. I firmly believe it. Doesn't get me excited to say that. I just know there's a lot of women out there that have perfectionistic tendencies like me. You own a business or you work in the corporate environment and you're trying to get ahead. You're running, you're burning the candle at both ends. And then when your fitness isn't working, you're pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And if that doesn't work, you're gonna go on an extreme diet or you're gonna try these protein bars and you're gonna cut, cut, cut and push, push, push and it's gonna make all of this worse. And that's why we're seeing so many more women, whether they're figure competitors or whether they're just people like me who've been pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, and when that's not enough, they just push, push, push more. More and more women are dealing with these hormonal problems at an earlier and earlier age. We're gonna see more and more women dealing with adrenal fatigue and cortisol issues, but it's also an issue that affects men. So we all need to become more educated become stronger advocates for ourselves because we can get better. I finally get that I can get better and you guys can get better. Um, I will be interviewing hopefully all of my favorite people. I know I'm interviewing Alex, um, this other girl, uh, Callie, I wanna get her on the podcast. There's several other women. These are women of all ages. Um, one gal is in her 20s, two girls that I know I wanna interview are in their 30s, several in their 40s, of course, but again, it's not limited to 40 plus or 50 plus. This can happen all the time. So hopefully, um, yes, uh, Amanda, I agree with you. And yes, let's all heal together. So if you guys are watching this on the replay, feel free, of course, to ping me. Um, as I'm getting ready to end this video, I don't see a share button or a save button, but hopefully I'm gonna, hopefully I'm gonna be able to. If, if you guys are watching this and you're live, I wanna end this video and I'm gonna, and you can, if you have questions and you're watching this on the replay, ping me and let me know what questions I can answer, what I can cover in, com in upcoming videos and certainly on the podcast. But one of the things that I have a problem with the last time I did this, I wanted to be able to save it to my highlights. And I just hit end and I didn't hit the save button and it didn't save it. So I hope if you guys are watching this, tell me that once I hit end up here at the top that the save button will come up. Is that right? Uh, Cause if not, if you can't tell me, I'll just figure it out. And I'm either gonna save this video or lose it, but I don't see any other option other than down here. Hi, uh, music by Ryan. Nope. Um, so anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. I don't, I wish I could answer all of your questions. Um, so many of you. Oh, I, hey, Kim. Um, yes, your experience. I was referencing that, by the way. Um, thank you for sharing your journey. I won't lose hope. Please don't lose hope. I, to be honest with you guys, as I wrap this up, hi Asif, um, hope is, is a key thing. I cannot tell you how many, I don't wanna cry, how many, how many meltdowns I've had about this. Um, how, how down you feel when you, have, you just keep trying and trying and trying and trying and trying and you feel like everyone's laughing at you and you feel embarrassed um, and you feel judged. And, and really most of that is imaginary. Most people aren't judging you and looking at you and picking you apart the way you do, but it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing. Um, 
I get angry sometimes because I look at other people and I'm like, why is it so easy for you? Why is it that you can do, you know, this, the intermittent fasting and you're just, you're changed and, and I do everything and nothing works. You know, I'm like a dead car with a dead battery. It's not easy, but you, that's I think why I got so excited, not only for my last doctor's appointment, because at least I knew some of the things that were working against me. I mean, being on medication that's blocking all my testosterone, that was a huge thing. And then looking up the side effects of that medication and I was on the maximum dose, that was a big thing. Pissed me off. But finding so many other women who are dealing with this and who are way ahead of me and have gotten through it, it certainly wasn't overnight, that encourages me to keep going. Um, and I just have to learn to accept myself and be kind and not embarrassed by myself and not beat myself up along the way because that's what adds to the stress and the cortisol and whatnot. Um, uh, Tanisha, are you dealing with that too? I didn't know you were. I haven't talked to you in forever. Um, thank you, sweetie. Thank you, Amanda. Um, yes, and it is all about learning, Dutch. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I have learned... <laughs> so freaking much and that's why as um as much as I want to heal I have a hair sticking to my lips obviously I want to heal myself I just feel like this is why I've gone through all this shit so that I can use my experience to educate so many because I really really believe we're going to see more and more women and I'm certain on the men's side as well but luckily men or I hate you for this. <laughs> Men can be fixed a lot easier. Men do not have the complex hormonal system that women do. Um, I get it. I'm deep in medical issues too. Oh, you are? Dutch, you've had some serious um, medical issues in the past. So, I mean, and that's the good thing about sharing it all. That's the great thing about social media, right? The fact that we can share this because the fact, the fact is, I've learned more from other people and then that's prompted me to do more research. And really the biggest thing I'm, I'm learning to change about myself is becoming much more pushy and much more of an advocate and not only sharing my story here and being very vulnerable and like raw and just keeping it real, but also just the, the reason that I made more progress this last time with my doctor is because I just went with my notes and my questions and I'm like, here's my question, here's my question. Why is this not happening? Because I knew there was something that was missing. There was something that we've been working together for a year and here I am a year later and this is again, I, not a reflection of him. I, I really don't. But we made more progress because I was more, here's the deal. We need to look at all this stuff. And it was also, it had a lot to do with the input from my um, my dietitian Emily, who is brilliant and so patient and so awesome. Um, Tisha said it's all the things that you said. Trying to advocate and stay strong. It, it's trying to stay trying to stay strong and positive is a hard part of this journey. Um, it's really hard for me to read some of the comments because of my shirt. Um, there aren't simple answers, and a, yeah, there's no one fit all approach. Um, and yes, you have to find a doctor that's gonna work with you. And that's, I think, we live in a country um, where we all want quick fixes. Um, I'm one of them, and it's really hard to be patient. It's really hard to be positive. Um, I have a wonderful, wonderful, I, that doesn't even cover it, man friend who puts up with my meltdowns. I mean, he's just, he's so used to um, us getting ready to go out on a date on Friday and I'll come out and I'm like, I'm just letting you know that I just about had a meltdown. Only one pair of my jeans fits me right now. Like to have busted my ass just, just alone in the last year and be at a point where I'm like, okay, last year at this time I was going into my closet going, oh my God, all my jeans are fitting me. That lasted for about um, 30 days maybe. And then my body started, you know, kicking back because I was destroying it. So the more that we share, the more that we can pick each other up. And the more that we see other women who are getting past this and men, um, that's what's encouraging. I told Alex the other day, I, I was chatting with her on the phone and I said, you have no idea the fact that you're sharing what you've been through and that I can watch and you're a real person that I know and I know you're nine months ahead of me, but you've done it. 
and I saw that it wasn't easy and I saw what you did and that's why I'm sharing this too. I'm sharing the lessons I've learned, the things where I'm like, oh, why? Why didn't I bring up a year ago? Why didn't I bring this up, you know, six months ago? Just the spirit of lactone thing. Why didn't I give myself enough credit? Why didn't I listen? Amanda, Amanda Tress told me, she told me six to nine months ago, you are not eating enough. And I'm like, clearly I'm eating too much. I didn't listen to the smart people. And then I was listening to too many of the people that didn't know particularly what they were talking about when it came to me because they didn't know my health issues. I listened way too much to my trainer Blaine. My trainer Blaine did not know the degree that I had adrenal fatigue and cortisol issues. So when I said, hey, can I do 20 minutes of HIIT training every morning? He's like, absolutely. And I did it. And then I would go train with him and we would have sprinting and very heavy lifting. And not that that's anything bad. For somebody like me, doing the plyo and the, the type, some of the types of metabolic conditioning we were doing, that was too much for me. And then I was adding more. He told me, I trained with him four days a week, and he said, the other two days, take it easy. Just, do you think I took it easy the other two days? No, because I wasn't seeing results, and I wasn't losing weight, and I still had tummy fat, and so I'm like, I gotta do something more. I'm not getting skinnier. I'm not losing my stomach weight. Guys and gals, none of that worked. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I am going to, you did finally find one and you're trying to figure it out, good. Um, and yes, a lot of docs aren't patient. I, mine is, if the whole world could come to Austin and see Dr. Lane Sebring, um, I wish I could clone him. I'm working with him on that, on cloning him. So um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna end this video and I really hope that when I hit this end button, it's gonna give me an opportunity to save this because last time I lost my video after 24 hours, but I promise to do a lot more of these. I promise you guys, I, I have so many outstanding specialists coming on Fit Flential Radio. Please make sure that you are tuned into our podcast. Um, we have, and I'm starting my own podcast actually very soon, uh, probably um, it probably might not be in October. We're, we're recording stuff for my show, my new show, um, and it'll probably launch November 1st. I'm launching my, relaunching my own blog and a new business. Um, it'll probably go live by Monday. We thought it'd be live last week, but I'm working on it. Um, so I am here, Mrs. Fit Librarian, by the way, if you're not following her, she's amazing. I haven't seen you in forever. Um, it's a process, you guys, but I really, as frustrated and down as I feel, I can tell you this, I absolutely know I'm going to get better. I absolutely know that I'm gonna come out on the other side of this successful. I absolutely know that I will be looking back at this video and going, look how sad and frustrated I was and look how much better I feel and how much better I am, you know? And I, I just know it and so many of us, we can do it, it's just, spreading knowledge. This is not mainstream knowledge. The stuff that's still mainstream is about, you know, cabbage soup diets and, you know, whether you should go keto or whether you should be paleo or, you know, still if you pick up your average shape magazine, they're going to tell you to have 1200 calories and do a bunch of cardio. Like this is all stuff that if you're in a bad position with any of these things, it's only going to make you worse. I digress. I'm going to finish now. I'm going to end this. Please pray that I'm gonna do this the right way and save it. I will be back soon. You guys have a great evening. You're awesome, thank you. And if I missed you and I didn't respond to one of your comments, just private message me. I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much.